Well, hey there, Wealthy Bosses. Welcome to another edition of the live Wealthy Boss Show. I'm your host, Mariah Seacrest Comer, and tonight we are talking about a very interesting topic that is not directly in line with health and wellness, but does impact our mental state of being. Um, we are going to be talking about when, what to do when your passion project is causing more stress than it's relieving. So first of all, I do apologize. I, um, I'm at my local, my new local favorite diner, wine bar, coffee place where uh, we just moved in and where, it's, where we've become, it's nice. It's like your go-to, um, you know, your bar down the corner. It's been a really wonderful place, but because of that, I forgot my tripod. So sorry, it's going to be a little bit shaky, um, but I'm coming to you live on location from local Johnny's. So yes, let's talk tonight about what to do when your passion project is causing more stress than it creates. So many of us begin um, a business with romanticized notions of what it is that we are um, motivated to do, achieve, accomplish. And oftentimes, the very reason that we set out to create a business in the first place ends up really coming back to be, you know, just as big of a problem as the one that we're trying to solve. So, you know, whether you started your business because you were not able to do the thing that you loved as your day job, or, um, you know, because you wanted to create new income stream, or you wanted to create time freedom, oftentimes we can, can find ourselves in that place once we pass that honeymoon period and we are kind of in the trenches of building a business and realizing just how dang stressful it can be and sometimes just how hard it can be to really make it what we need it to be or what we want it to be or what we dream of it to be, that it can start to become um, disenchanting, uh, disappointing, and we might start to question, you know, is this really worth it? You know, I set out to, um, you know, to chase my dreams and now this doesn't really feel so much like a dream okay so I have several things and I will tell you that I you know I have been there this is common for every single entrepreneur I still go through this on a regular basis so my background is that I you know, I've been building a side hustle while working full-time day jobs for about three years so it can be hard and we need every now and then I, I think it's healthy and normal to evaluate you know, what it is that we're looking for from our business. And there are some strategies. I don't have all the answers. I would love to get some feedback as well. So if you're watching, please weigh in on the comments. Or if you're watching the replay, I'd love to hear your comments as well. But I do think there are some things that, that I picked up and that together we can um, hold each other accountable for and remind each other of so that we can uh, really pivot when we need to pivot or just stay the course when we just need to stay the course. So first of all, I think it's very important to take a step back from your business and ask yourself what it is that you're looking for from creating that business. Because how you handle the stress that your passion project is creating is really dependent on what it is that is really driving you to build that business in the first place. So if you, for example, are building a business because you wanted a chance to, to do something or to apply skill sets that you were not finding in your day job, if it's you know, a, a hobby or something, I know sometimes hobby can sound a little trite when something is really a passion of yours, but if it's something that you just want to do because you love it, I would actually challenge you to think about whether you need it to be a business for you to continue to love it. Honestly, sometimes creating a business out of something that we love, that's our passion, that's our hobby, sometimes that takes the fun out of it. And that can sound like being a wet blanket, and I don't mean to be, and that's only an option for some people. But there are instances in which, you know, making whatever we love into a business just starts to attach all sorts of, of you know, non-passion, uh, you know, elements to it. And so first of all, if you're just doing this to augment something, you know, where you're not getting fulfilled in your day job, can you find a way, does it need to be a business? Can you find a way to practice what you love you on a volunteer basis or, or on a hobby basis? So that's not an option for everyone. That might not be why you got into business. And if not, that's totally fine. But it, if it is, it's okay to question whether or not you really need it to be your business or maybe it's just a hobby. Okay. So for some people you're like, yeah, you know, maybe I could think about that. For others of you, it's like a big, you know, heck no. Like that is not why I got into this. I got into this for something deeper. I'm not giving up. That's not an acceptable answer. So awesome. Let's move on to that to the next, next set of strategies. So 
if you designed your business because you want it to, to be a job solution, whether that's an additional income stream to meet your financial goals, to give you um, an open-ended earning potential, or whether you dream of replacing your day job, or maybe you already have replaced your day job, but it's just way more work than you thought. Um, it, because you wanted the time freedom or because you wanted, you know, just something that appealed to you about the lifestyle of owning your own business, then great, let's move forward. We've got so many strategies we can discuss and so many things that we can help us along the way of creating that dream life that really prompted us and motivated us to begin that business in the first place. So first of all, I want you to be able to differentiate and recognize whether it's your business itself or the project you're working on that's really creating the stress or just everything else in your life that comes along with being, you know, an adult, <laughs> a responsible citizen. So for example, I've been feeling pretty maxed out lately, um, but it's not necessarily from my business. You know, there are pieces of my business, of course, that are stressful, just like everyone else. But I also need to realize, you know, I just started a new day job. I just moved into a brand new house. My husband and I are going through the adoption process, which has taken on, you know, a tremendous amount of paperwork and, you know, not super exciting stuff. So, you know, I started, it helps me to realize, and I think it can help you to realize that, you know, it might not just be your business is stressing you out. It might just be everything else in your life that you can't necessarily forfeit in order to, you know, focus on the things that you do want to focus on, like your job, right? So I think that can just be helpful to identify that maybe, you know, maybe it's just everything else in life that's adding to your stress levels. And that kind of is what it is, but it helps you to kind of take everything in stride and realize that, you know, you don't need to quit your day job just, or quit your, I'm sorry, quit your business just because other stressful things in your life are going on, like your car breaking down or your kids getting sick and having to deal with that, right? So do recognize the sources of stress for what they are and don't blame your business for stress that wasn't really caused by your business, but it just feels like it's mounting because of all the other areas of responsibility in your life. Okay, secondly, delegate what you hate or aren't good at. My goodness, as entrepreneurs, we have to wear so many hats, especially those of us who are solopreneurs, who are just starting our businesses and don't have a lot of help. Um, it can feel like we, you know, this thing that we we got into because we loved and now suddenly instead of, you know, whatever your, your industry is, instead of, um, you know, creative writing, you're now having to worry about things like, you know, Facebook ad metrics and all these things that you didn't get into your business that you're pa because you're passionate about, but you have to worry about, right? So delegate what you can and cut what you can. For me, I relieved a lot of stress in my business when I realized that there were certain social media platforms that I didn't like and that weren't performing for me, and I just cut them out. Okay, so you'll no longer see me posting on Instagram for the time being. You'll no longer see me posting on Twitter. I gave that up because it was something that, that I could give up and that wasn't moving me forward, and I was just doing because I felt like good business owners are supposed to be on every single social media channel. So cut out what you can cut out that is driving you nuts or that you really don't enjoy doing and delegate those other things that really aren't in the core competency of what drew you to begin your business in the first place. You know, hire a virtual assistant if you need to or hire someone to do, to build your website for you or to put your Facebook ads together and run your social media or run their, their advertising campaigns. It's okay to recognize those areas of running a business that you don't love and find someone else to do them. That's one of the best strategies of actually enjoying your business that I can recommend. Secondly, scale back if you can. You know, mo a lot of us are running online businesses, which means that we really get to control the number of hours that we spend in a day, um, especially if you're looking at any type of passive income stream model. You know, and this comes hard to us as entrepreneurs because typically those who start businesses are those that are already super ambitious and super, um, you know, high-performing type A, perfectionistic, hard on themselves. You get the idea. You probably have a few more, um, you know, adjectives to fill in the blanks with. But, you know, recognize that as online entrepreneurs, if your business is online, not, I know not everyone has an online income stream, but if you're running an online business, 
the beauty of that is you can really kind of pick it up and set it down when you need to. You can ebb and flow. So if you've got a lot going on at home or maybe you're working a day job as well and you've got a lot going on with that, it's okay to scale back when you can. You don't have to do everything right at once. I know for myself, I have so many projects I want to do. I want to start a podcast. I want to write a new ebook. There's an additional service to one of my products that I want to add. But because I'm handling a lot of things at once, I had to recognize for myself, you know, it's okay to put some things on the back burner. It's okay not to do everything at once. It's okay to take a few weeks off to, you know, decorate my house and organize my kitchen space because I just moved into a new house. So I know that's hard for us as entrepreneurs. We don't like to put things off. We don't like to hold back, but sometimes that's what we need to still feel good about our businesses and not totally burn out. So scale what you can. Um, along with that, if you're not already utilizing a passive income stream model, I challenge you to look at that. You know, and by passive income, I mean something that is something that you've already created that can you can sell and make money off of that doesn't require additional hours once you've made the sale. So, you know, the, the old income model of dollars for hours where you're trading, you know, your work for um, you know, for money is I feel like not necessarily all that, the, that you can take advantage of with the internet. I love incorporating, incorporating the passive income stream model where you know, maybe you create, whether that's a book you're selling online, where the work's done ahead of time, where it, whether you have one customer or a thousand customers, it's the same exact amount of work and you're still making money but not having to work any um, harder. So I do challenge you, if you're feeling really burnt out and stressed out by your, by your business, you know, take a look at your business model. Are there passive income streams that you can work on and develop so that you're not tied to your business 24-7? So those kind of go hand in hand, both scaling back as well as developing those passive income stream models that can help generate that income and that lifestyle that you want without taking more and more and more of your time because your time is, at the end of the day, a fixed commodity. Okay, after you've done all that, I want you to also realize if, if building a business is important to you and it's not something that you want to just do as a hobby, it's really important to you to create this lifestyle as an entrepreneur, then I want you to just remember to keep that end goal in mind, okay? This is, you know, think of it as like going to college. Like, if this is a career choice for you, if you're wanting, whether you're wanting to replace your current day job or just supplement it so that you have that, that open-ended earning potential. You know, think of this like going to college. It took you four years to go to college, right? Or at least two years if you could earn an associate's or maybe eight years if you went to a master's program. Think of the early years of building your business like going to college. Sometimes you've just got to put in the time to yield those results. I heard a quote the other day, uh, I think it was on Pinterest that I love, that said entrepreneurs are willing to live like no one else will for a few years so that they can live like no one else can forever. And I do think it's worth keeping in mind that you know what we're striving for is is hard work and that's why most people don't end up following their dreams because it's so much hard work and can often feel like it's not worth it. So I do want to encourage you if you feel like you're in one of those slumps where you're just you know you have a dream um, a desire of what you want your life to look like and you're not there yet and you're questioning whether or not all this hard work is worth it, you know, just remember that most of us don't reach that finish line right away, that you're working towards something that's that's going to pay off in the long run. So keeping that vision board ahead of you of what, you know, what it is that you're working for, what it is that you want to get out of it is really important. But equally important, I, I think they go hand in hand, is practicing self-care and setting boundaries along the way. You cannot keep a crazy, grueling, unrelenting pace for years and years and years on end. And for many of us, it years and years is what it takes to build a successful business. So I encourage you to practice self-care wherever you can to create even little tiny pockets of time for yourself, for your physical health, for your emotional health, for your relationships, so that you can stay the course, so that you can outlast everyone else who's going to give up on their dreams before you do. You need to be able to sustain this pace for as long as it takes if this is important to you. So practice self-care, practice those boundaries, look, you know, keep that end goal in mind, but also take care of yourself so that you can have the stamina that it takes to reach your dreams. I have a free resource that I want to give to you. 
to help you stay that course, to help you on a daily basis when you're feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling like your passion project is just creating more stress than you ever intended it to. And that is my seven day mindset mantra challenge. So these are mantras that I use and that are specifically crafted for overworked, type A, driven, ambitious entrepreneurs who might have a few specific mindset um, adjustments that they need to make in order to stay calm and serene and focused on on their work, but also um, on themselves as individuals. So you can download, actually it's not a download, it's a, it's a text message challenge. So you can receive the instructions to enroll in this mindset mantra challenge by texting the word, the keyword, it's all one word, mindset mantras to the number 33444. So again, that's mindset mantras, all one word, all capital letters to the number 33444. And from there, you're going to receive a daily text message from me for seven days with a mantra for you to focus on that day that is specifically related to life as an entrepreneur and the things that we uniquely struggle with as driven, ambitious, perfectionistic people. I would love for you to let me know how those mindset mantras um, help you and play out for you. And if you have any mindset mantras that you rely on to, um, to keep you going during those difficult times, but also to remind yourself that you are um, more than your accomplishments, you're more than your your numbers or your social media following or the dollars in the bank, you are important as an individual. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that as entrepreneurs because it doesn't come naturally for us. So again, I invite you to join that Mindset Mantra Challenge by texting the keyword Mindset Mantras to 33444. I also invite you to join me every week. I'm here every Tuesday. Usually it's not quite this noisy. I'm sitting right outside of the, at a cafe right now. But I do invite you to join me every Tuesday at same time, 545 Pacific Standard Time, um, for another episode of The Wealthy Boss Show, where we talk about all things related to self-care and health and wellness, both, both physical and mental and emotional as entrepreneurs. Um, again, I'm your host, Mariah Seacrest Comer. I work a full-time day job. I'm a certified personal fitness trainer and yoga instructor on top of running um, you know, full-time jobs for the past 10 years in business development. And I know what it's like to be a burning the candle at both ends, and it's my desire to help sustain you through all of your ambitions, all of your projects, all of your efforts, and help you create that life that you dream of. I will see you next time. I would love to hear your advice and your comments on how to manage your yourself and your expectations when your passion project is creating stress. So I look forward to hearing your comments in, um, in the comments below and to seeing you next week. Take care, everyone.